Welcome back everybody to another episode of Mid-South Outdoors. Today I want to talk about managing a fish population in your private pond. Uh, so yesterday I was fortunate enough to have Anderson Bait Company come out to the house to stock some golden shiners. Uh, but before we get to that, I want to talk about some of the other stuff that I've done to my pond to get it to the point where it is now. So the first thing is, is when I first moved here, I wanted to figure out what was in the pond so I can get a, a, a start. I didn't pay somebody to come out and shock the water. I just fished it um, and tried to catch what I could to kind of get an estimate of what was going on in the water. And from what I could tell when I first moved in a couple of summers ago was that it, I had a significant bluegill population and not much of anything else. So the first thing I wanted to do was get the other species that I wanted in here and get those stocked. So I made a live well out of a cooler so I can transport them easily down to the water and release them where they wouldn't be harmed and they would be sure to survive. So the first couple of summers I spent a lot of time catching largemouth bass, black crappie, and uh, shellcrackers and getting those stocked in the pond. I did catch a few catfish and throw them in here, but the river otters ate those pretty quickly. Um, after I got the fish in here that I wanted, I needed to um, create a way of feeding them. So I did buy some pelleted feed, and after using it a few times, I realized that it works exceptionally well for bluegill. Uh, catfish even eat it fairly well. The largemouth bass do not eat it. The crappie do not eat it. I watched them pretty religiously and I never saw a largemouth bass or a crappie come to the pelleted feed, but bluegill will come almost every single time in swarms. After that, I purchased 20 pounds of flathead minnows, which equated to several thousand minnows, and I released those in here. Uh, last summer, I bought 20, 000, or, or, or 20 pounds uh, of fathead minnows again and I in addition to that I bought two 30 pound sacks of crawfish from a local uh, truck here in Memphis area and I released those and I turned those loose down the bank now I did release the crawfish um, kind of early in the crawfish season it was still kind of cold outside and in retrospect I should have done that in the warmer months so if I end up doing that again, which I probably will, maybe not this summer, but maybe next summer I'll get some more crawfish in here. I will do it later in the crawfish season, probably around mid-April. I just, I think that that might help to their survival rate, uh, which I could be wrong. Anyways, so what I did yesterday, which to start off yesterday was a beautiful day on the water. There was a slight frost in the morning, but... The sunrise was beautiful, the pond looked great, um, and Anderson Bait Company was coming out to the house to drop off some golden shiners. Now, I've never stocked golden shiners. I really didn't know what to expect, uh, but I purchased, I pre-ordered 30 pounds, which 30 pounds sounds like a lot, which it is, it is a lot of fish, but when you see it in person, it doesn't visually look like a lot, but it was several thousand fish that I stocked uh they they charge by the weight it was 13 dollars per pound and i ordered 30 pounds so it was 390 dollars uh the truck was unable to get to the water's edge so we had to carry the uh golden shiners down to the water in five gallon buckets and they were able to put 15 pounds of golden shiners in each five gallon bucket. So it was only two five gallon buckets worth to carry down to the water's edge. So that made it really easy. The reason why I chose golden shiners was because of their growth rate and their, their overall size in comparison to fathead minnows. At uh, full maturity, the golden shiner should reach around eight inches in length. Uh, when they reach full maturity, it's, it only, one, it only takes about six months for them to reach that mature age. But once they do, they will spawn. So technically, the fish that I stocked yesterday could theoretically spawn this fall should some of them survive. Um, and in stocking that many fish at one time, I'm kind of playing the odds hoping that some of those fish will make it to the fall uh, to spawn and repopulate just in case i will probably order some more in the fall 
just to kind of help boost the population. Well guys, that's going to do it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something. If you're looking to uh, feed your fish and looking for some forage fish, or you're just looking to stock your pond, give Anderson Bait Company a call. They really hooked me up. No, they did not sponsor me. Yes, I had to pay for these fish. I paid uh, $13 a pound, um, and I bought 30 pounds, so that was $390. And for me, I think that was a very good price for what it's going to do to my pond. And it's going to provide a lot of forage food for the fish that's in this pond. They will spawn. When a big one spawns, I think he told me uh, 20,000 eggs they could lay. Uh, so I'm very pleased. I'm really uh, hopeful at what that's going to do to this pond. But that's going to do it for today. Hopefully I'll get into some fish this weekend and have another video for you later in the week or next week. You guys have a good one.